chapter 5, uh, special right triangles. We have two types of triangles to cover. Uh, today, we're going to do the easy one first. 45, 45, 90 triangle. Uh, by definition, a 45, 45, 90 triangle uh, looks like this. It is an isosceles triangle. Isosceles meaning that the legs, to use a geometry term, the legs are congruent. They are the same length. When I have 45 and 45, this leg and this leg have to be congruent. The side opposite of the right angle is called the what? The hypotenuse. Very good. This is just some review, some geometry term review. I say leg and I'm going to say hypotenuse, you need to know what I'm talking about. The formula for a 45, 45, 90 triangle is that if the legs are X, a certain length, then in order to find the hypotenuse, we take that length and we multiply it by root 2. So if this leg is 6 and this leg is 6, then this leg, uh, sorry, this hypotenuse would be 6 root 2. The hypotenuse is 6 root 2. I'll do some more examples here in a second. But this is the formula. X and X and X root 2. You have to have it memorized by Friday. I will not give you the formula on the test. Okay? You, you need the formula, right. And the way I remember it uh, is that 45 and 45, you have two angles that equal 45, and that's how you know that it's root 2. And the 30, 60, 90, in just a second, I have another way of remembering that. That's not a very good mnemonic device, but if you have two 45s, then you're going to have x root 2. An example uh, would look like this. 45 and 45. If this is 5, find x and find y. Okay, instantly you should be able to tell me x because it's an isosceles triangle, so x is equal to 5, and then the hypotenuse is 5 root 2. Okay, just like that. But couldn't you find the hypotenuse anyway? You could using what? Yes, you could. But what if I were to do this? And this leads, that leads me into the next question. Anytime you have two sides, then you could go backwards or you could use the uh, Pythagorean theorem and find the third side. Well, what happens if they only give you one side? You can't use the Pythagorean theorem, but we can use our new formula. You're exactly right. We can use our new formula. So now, if they put these arcs, what does that mean? They're congruent. And in this case, if that's 90, then we now have a 45, 45, 90. What side are they giving you? That should be the number one question you're asking yourself. Right? They're giving you the hypotenuse, and the, like I said, the number one question you're asking yourself is what information are they giving me? Right? They're giving me it's a triangle. They're giving me that it's an isosceles right triangle. They're giving me that it is a 45-45-90 triangle, and they're telling me the hypotenuse is 10. If the hypotenuse is 10, how do I go backwards and find the legs? What is the, rela oh, you're right. what is the relationship between the hypotenuse to the leg? What is it? You're going to divide by what? Root 2. You're going to divide by root 2. So if I take 10 and I divide by root 2, then what do I have to do? I can't leave root 2 on the bottom. Multiply by root 2 on the top and bottom. Correct. I rationalize the denominator by multiplying by root 2 over root 2. I get 10 root 2 all over 2. Can I cancel? Yes. 10 and 2, I better cancel, right? Because both of them are what? Outside the radical. And so my legs are what? Very good. Five root two is five root two. So if they give you a leg, then you automatically know the other leg and you can figure out the hypotenuse. If they give you the hypotenuse, then you have to work backwards in order to find the legs. Does that make sense? Tanner? All right, how about this one? Uh, let's try this one. First of all, what information have they given you? They've given you the hypotenuse. Very good. So if I go backwards, in order to find the leg, what do I have to do? 7 divided by, I heard somebody say it, 7 divided by root 2. Is that my answer? No. Why not? Why can't 7 root 2 be my answer? So watch this. 
Is it okay if I put a root 2 there and take this off? Yeah. Will that work? Yeah. Yes, it does. That's exactly the same thing you end up with. Can I cancel anything in this one? No. Is it okay would I put 3.5 times root 2? Are those the same thing? Technically, they are, but you never see anything written like that. It's like saying 1 over 1.5. You never mix a fraction and a decimal. I won't say never, but 9 times out of 10, you don't see that. So the same thing there, I'd rather see this answer, okay, written as a rational. Questions? Any questions on 45, 45, 9? Okay. Uh, while I'm erasing this, can anybody tell me an example, a real-life example? Of a 45, 45, 90 triangle? Great, here's your chance. A real life example of a 45, 45, 90 triangle. <laughs> if your father is fairly handy, he might own one. Very good, Taylor. It looks like this has a place for your hand to hold. Anybody know what it's called? Nobody's known all day long. A bow and arrow. Close. Let me show you. When you're doing uh, construction and you have a long board, or not necessarily a long board, but anyway, you put it on the board, you slap it on there, and you can either get a ni nice 90 degree mark or you can get a 45 degree mark. Speed, 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 speed square. It's called a speed square. Right? You yeah, put it on the board and it either gives you a 45 degree angle or it gives you a 90 degree angle. Why would, uh, yeah, it might be bonus. Why, uh, why would you need a 45 degree angle in general construction? Like, if you do like if you do an angle Very good. These are all good answers. Right. What is that called? What kind of joint is that called? It starts with an M. A corner. <laughs> it's a mitered joint. That's a mitered joint, right? That's a 45 and 45. You get a nice mitered joint. It looks a lot better than a butt joint, right? Don't laugh. That's what it's called. Right? I mean, it just it butts up. A miter joint in a door casement looks a lot better. How many picture frames do you see look like this? A lot. No. And most of the time, they look like this. See what you see. All right. Go look at the picture frame. Great, great. Was that a real life example of what we're doing? No, okay. Yes or no? Geometry has a lot more to do with real world stuff. I agree. I agree. Algebra. I think that's one of the reasons I enjoy teaching you. I hate it. I hate geometry. I was just saying. It's harder. I don't care how many angles are in a triangle. All right. Back when I took drafting at Stakes for High in 1992 with Mr. Freeman, we had a table, we didn't have computers, we had a table and you got a piece of paper and you had to tape your paper on there and you had three instruments. You had a pencil, you had a 45, 45, 90 triangle and you had a 30, 60, 90 triangle. Those were all you needed in order to draft and make things up, construct things. Architects use them, draftsmen use them. Now they're all on the computer, right? What does CAD stand for? Yeah. CAD. Computer Animated. assisted drawing. Computer assistant drawing. All right, here we go. 30, 60, 90. This is the only one that I'm going to draw that, that looks technically correct. The rest I'm just going to draw a triangle. But in a true 30, 60, 90, you have a 60 degree angle, which is fairly wide. I'm trying not to use the word fat. A 60 degree angle that's wide. Then down here you have a 30 degree angle that's fairly skinny. Okay? So you got a 30, 60, 90. This obviously is the 90 degree angle. Your rule says, and this one's a little more complex than the 45, 45, 90. Your rule says the one, the side that is opposite the 30 degree angle is X. It's your easiest one. It's X. The hypotenuse, working forward, is 2X. It's always double this side. If the 30 degree angle is 5, then this one's 10. If this one's 12, that one's 24. If this one's 7.5, what would this one be? 15. It's double the amount. If you go this direction, the 60 degree angle is this amount times root 3. This is your formula. This is what you need to have memorized. No matter how you draw the triangle, 
The 60 degree will be x root 